could be more at home on the range than the Range Rider. With his thrilling adventures of the great outdoors, his exciting experiences rivaling those of Davy Crockett, Daniel Boone, Buffalo Bill, and other pioneers of this wonderful country of ours. And Dick West, all-American boy. Fargo State reached Porterville. Tell Barstow some of my horses need shoeing. Horses out of gunsight need chewing, Barstow. I'll ride out and get them in the morning. Oh, uh, drop this letter off at the bank, will you? It's for Benton. Department of the Interior. Wonder what this is about. That's no concern of ours. We only deliver the mail. Here's one for you, Matt, from the Pony Express main office. What's the matter? Bad news? We're in trouble, Dick. The Postal Department may not renew its contract with the Pony Express. But that'll put us out of business when the contract expires in two weeks. The stage lines, I guess, are creeping up on us. That's right. The Wells Fargo's already reached Porterville. But we can carry mail three times faster across the country. Maybe not as much, but, but we'll speed up our service. No, we'd have to build new relay stations and put on more horses and men. And the Pony Express is practically broke, and so am I. But you've got enough equipment to guarantee a bank loan. Benton ought to make it. I wouldn't ask Tom Benton for one red cent. He's a low-down, double-crossing sneak. I reckon you better start looking for another job, Dick. Well, we're not out of business yet. I've got over $1,000 saved up. And I know the Range Rider will put up what he's got to help the Pony Express. It's too risky. I won't take your money. We'll establish new relay stations. Use tents if necessary. Then we'll get Jonathan Logan to sell us horses on credit. Hey, and we... hey, you there. What's a range rider doing driving a stagecoach? When he's supposed to be riding the mail in from Sacramento. There she is, folks. She's a beauty. Came all the way around the horn by boat. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Range Rider. Hello. Good timing. Hi, Tom. Just before you brought the coach in, I got this letter. Looks like we'll have the franchise for carrying the mail. Great. Now, if we can just make Matt listen to reason. Starting a stage line, Range Rider? No, Mr. Benton's starting the line, but I'm going to throw in with him. Well, congratulations, Tom. Rim Rock deserves a more up-to-date service than the Pony Express. By the way, if you need any horses, I've got plenty on my ranch. Thanks, Logan. What's this about a stage line, Range Rider? And where's the mail you were riding in from Sacramento? Well, Matt, Mr. Benton and I have a lot to explain, and it's all good. And here's your mail. Come on inside, Matt, and I'll do the explaining. You see, it's like this, Matt. I want to hear from the Range Rider. He was riding Pony Express for me. Now it seems like he's driving a stagecoach. How come? Well, I quit the Pony Express in Sacramento, Matt. I hope you'd understand that what I was... You quit? I never thought you'd let me down. You've been with me since the time I took over the division. I asked the range rider not to say anything until I got my franchise from the government. Barstow bought me official confirmation. All I'm waiting for now is the mail contract. It ought to be here any day now. Why, you low-down, sneaking polecat, I might have expected this of you. 
You've got Tom all wrong, Matt. He wants to help you. Help me? Him? I wouldn't trust him any further than I could throw this building. Why, you old moss back, you're 50 years behind the times. You know as well as everyone else does that the Pony Express is through, but you're too stubborn to admit it. I'll show you whether I'm through or not. The company may not be doing so well now, but we'll build her up again. Oh, I know how you feel, Dick. We both felt the same way about the Pony Express. But it served its purpose. The development of the West depends on transportation. Why, someday the stagecoach lines will be running from coast to coast. And later on, they'll be replaced by the railroads. We can't stop progress. Why don't you get a soapbox? Forget the past, Matt. Listen to Tom. Listen to his proposition. That sounds fair enough. The whole thing is simple. You've got the relay stations, horses and men, and I own the stage line. We go into partnership. Sure. I'll be junior partner and take orders from you. Not me. I don't want any part of you. You can pick up your wages at the office. Come on, Dick. Wait a minute, Dick. You've got to listen to me. Why waste your time? I'm sticking with Matt. You sure sold your friends down the river. Just when they needed you most. Stay out of this, Barstow. I don't like double crossers. <laughs> you were serious. I only did it because I like to see a fair fight. As far as I'm concerned, you're still a double crosser. I'm not too much surprised at Matt, though I had hoped it would work. You see, Range Rider, he and I were partners when we first came to Rimrod. We shared everything. And then we met a girl. Well, I married her, and Matt's never forgiven me for it, and I don't suppose he ever will. Well, for his own good, we'll keep trying. We'll go ahead as we planned. We'll build our road along the Pony Express route. Sure, by that time you'll have the letter from the Postal Department, we'll be ready to make our first run. Maybe by then Matt will be ready to listen to reason. But we'll have to be ready or we lose the franchise. Don't worry about that. I'll go ahead and buy supplies and start hiring good men. Fine. That's coming along fine. Well, it looks like your coach is just about finished, Logan. Yeah. Ready for the final touches. Of course, it isn't as fancy as Benton's Concord, but it'll cover the ground and carry the mail. Provided you get that mail contract. I'll get that mail contract, all right. All we've got to do is make Benton default on that first mail run. Yes, yeah, like you said, that feud between Matt and Benton is sure making things a lot easier for us. You certainly did a good job promoting that this morning. Now, when they run into trouble, they'll blame each other. I'll get the boys to stand by. Don't do anything until I tell you. I want Benton to complete those roads and those relay stations. We'll need them. By the way, Barstow, here's a little advance for you. Oh, thanks, boss.
Rides like a baby buggy, Tom. Even though that road you built between here and Porterville is as rough as a washboard. <laughs> well, at least you got over it. We'll be through to the main road Rimrock tomorrow. Good. Uh, have you heard any news from Matt or the kid? Well, only secondhand. Neither one of them will talk to me. Well, maybe when that bullheaded old reprobate goes broke, he'll come to his senses. I hope he comes to his senses before he goes broke. Come over here and help me check over this map, will you? Right. Quite a deal putting the road in through these rocks here. You've done a good job, Tom. Thanks. You don't think that... No, Matt Ryan wouldn't go so far as to try to wreck the coach. We'll find out. employees ain't welcome around here. You been to the station all day, Mike? What business is the yours? That horse must have just come in. From the looks of him, he's been ridden mighty hard. Sure. Pony Express rider just went through. Now, don't bother me. I got to get a horse ready for Dick West. Go ahead. I'm in no hurry. on your pal here. He held me up with a lot of questions. Well, there's a few questions I'd like to ask myself. Three men attacked the Joshua Tree Relay Station just as I rode in. They killed Clint and drove the horses off. You know better than to think I'd be mixed up in anything like that. But what about your pal, Benton? Neither would he. 
There's something I might as well tell you. Somebody tried to wreck our stagecoach a little while ago by rolling a big rock down on it. I pick up the man's trail and it led here. You're not trying to blame Matt and me. No, I think there's a third party horning in. Oh, that's a lot of hogwash. Who'd stand to gain anything by horning in? I don't know. Well, maybe you've got something. But after the double crossing you gave Matt and me, it'd take a lot more than talk to convince us. If I get your proof, will you work with me? Depends upon the proof. It doesn't matter now what the range rider and his sidekick think. I've got news from Washington that Matt Ryan's contract with the Postal Department expires as of today. Then Benton's line will have to make the first mail run in the morning. There won't be any run because Benton won't know about it. He'll miss. The government will accept my bid and I'll take over his franchise. Yeah, but news must be on the way to Benton now. Yes, Young West is carrying Benton's letter of authorization, but we'll knock him off his horseshoe, Ben, and get it. You're wrong, Logan. Gonna stay right here until Dick has time to reach Rimrock. On your feet over against the wall. Reach. I have to figure out what to do with you when I get back. Tex, you and Joe tie him up. Come on, boys. Sit down in this chair.
and Matt Tom has had nothing to do with your troubles. It's been Logan, and this feud between the two of you is a perfect cover-up. Why argue with him? We've got to ride out to Horseshoe Bend and help Dick. We'd never make it in time. We could change horses at our station, but they're too far apart. If we can use yours, we can make it. Sure. Come on. Department. One to Matt Ryan and one to Tom Benton. Matt's letter looks like a copy of one I just received. After today, Benton's stage line will pick up the mail. Yeah, and I have to deliver Benton's contract, which puts the Pony Express out of business. Well, it's tough, but the mail's got to go through. Good luck. Better go, Dick. Hey, Sharky, gee, fuck there. Don't... 